This is Darth Bovine. <laughs> Not really, I mean, this is a towel instead of a robe. But hey, I can do this. Okay, let's quickly explain what I have here. I've placed my cheesy spaceship interior here for my background. My next group contains our talentless actor wannabe. The easiest way to create this effect is to shoot your talent in front of a chroma key background and then key the footage. I've already added and tweaked the Primat RT and the Matte Magic filters because that's a tutorial all on its own. So let's create a hologram. First off, we're going to tint the hologram blue, which will really help give this a convincing look. Select our hologram clip and fly the mouse up to the Add Filter button. Color correction and then tint. Our default color won't work for what we're doing, so click on the color well and find a nice dark blue. I happen to already know the exact tint of blue that I want, so click on the color sliders icon and make sure RGB sliders is selected. Type in 32 for red, hit the tab key and type in 81 for green and 161 for blue. Alright, I look like a smurf. Nice. Next, we want to drop the opacity low enough that you can see through our hologram, but not so low that you can't tell what the image is. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab. Move the opacity slider down to um, about 90%. Looks like it will work just fine. Now we're going to add some of the final touches to our hologram. Go back up to the Add Filters button and choose Stylize, Bad TV. This filter by default is doing a lot of things, and we only want to utilize a few of the options. Waviness does just what you think it would, so let's crank it down to zero. Remember how in the olden days TVs would roll when the signal went bad? Move the slider to zero or negative 100 or 100. We now have some great texture to our hologram that would be a lot easier to see on a broadcast monitor. I would like to add just a little more texture by adding a beam that would scroll down the hologram. Click on the Shapes tool and create a long skinny rectangle. Move our line up above our talent and click on the Positions Animation menu. In the pop-up menu, choose Add Keyframe, and we're set. Jump 45 frames down the timeline by adding 45 in the current frame filled. Click on the record button or hit the A key and then move our bar below our member of the blue man group. Almost. Almost. Okay, jump another second down the timeline and create one last keyframe. If the clip is not selected, you can type plus 30. Select our rectangle and go back to the position's parameters. To save time and to bypass the animation menu, hold down the option key and click on the keyframe icon. Hit the home key and let's check out the results. Very cool, except our line eases into the shot and then eases out. Click on the keyframe editor tab or hit the command and eight keys. I want this line to move at the same speed across our talent. Right click on one of the keyframes connected to the Bezier curve and choose linear because I want this line to move at the same speed across our talent. I want the line to do what we just animated throughout the remainder of the clip. We could recreate those keyframes over and over again, or we can let motion do it for us. I'm for the latter. Left click on the Y position keyframes icon in the keyframe editor and choose after last keyframe. Then select repeat. Nice, look at that. Also, this is great because you can make changes to the original keyframes and all the following keyframes will update with the originals. If we scrub down the timeline a little, we can see that our light beam just looks like a white bar in front of our hologram. Go back to the timeline by hitting the command and seven keys. Select the hologram clip. Blast the mouse up to object, add image mask, and nothing changed except an image mask tab appeared. Click and drag our rectangle shape to the mass source well. I want the opposite of what we're seeing to occur, so select the invert mass check box. 
If you have worked with the blend modes, this should look like a very familiar technique. In some cases, this can save you time. If you're not familiar with blend modes, an image mask works just like this. If you have white text or a black to white gradient with an image behind it, you can create a transparency in the background image. Our line looks too harsh. Okay, let's quickly turn off the record button so we don't animate our opacity change. Select our rectangle shape. Hit F1 to open up the properties tab. Drop the rectangle's opacity to around 23%. This turns our white rectangle into a gray one. Select our image mask down in the timeline. The mass blend mode section determines how our object interacts with the alpha channel of the clip. For example, uncheck invert mask. Subtract subtracts a mask from the alpha channel to create a hole in the background clip. The best way to understand replace and intersect is to add another image mask. So I'll place some text on our line. Make sure the video clip is selected so the image mask gets applied to it instead of the text. Then add an image mask. Quickly drag our text into the mask source well. Let's just verify that I have our top image mask selected. Now let's do this. There's add. Okay, let's change the blend mode to subtract. We have a hole. Then replace. This replaces the layer's original alpha channel and the other mask. Last is intersect. This is like replace except our other mask is visible. Enough of that. Delete the text and the other image mask. Our hologram is done except we need to animate it onto the screen. I would like to animate it onto the screen as if the projector is trying to build the image but having trouble. Select the actor wannabe group. Click on the Rectangle Mass Tool. Create a long box. Do, 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 da, do, do. Okay. Make sure the Invert Mass checkbox is not checked. Grab our mass so it's just barely off the screen. Hit the Home key to get to the first frame. Hit the F1 key to open up the Properties tab. Hold down the Option key and create a position keyframe. Click on the empty area in the canvas or timeline. Type plus 17 and hit return. Select the mask and turn on the record button by hitting the A key. Then move the mask below our hologram. Do, 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 do. Move the playhead to the 29th frame. Make sure the actor wannabe group is selected. Create another mask that consumes the whole image. Create another position keyframe, type a 9 in the current frame field so we jump back to 20 frames. Move the mask above our clip. This is looking good except we purchased a really cheap hologram projector. So let's add even more projector interference. Go to frame 26 and select the bad TV filter. Hit F3 to open up the filters tab. Mark a waviness, static, and scanline brightness keyframe. Go to frame 13 and crank up the waviness to around 121. Change static to 1. Make the scanline brightness about 3, and this should be the final results. This has been Steven Smith with yet another motion tutorial. May the force be with your Edit Bay.